Hey everybody, I'm Ken Coot Van Druten and that is... This is Chris Raybold. Welcome to my home for the seven billionth time. Here we are. There he right. is in a Zoom call. Um, With you. Episode episode 41. I find it... 42. 42. You're right. It is episode 42. 42. Um, I find it fascinating that we've been doing these things and speaking on a regular basis to do these things and haven't seen each other in person for months. a year almost a year, a year. yeah almost a year. it's funny you said that i <clears throat> i thought about that very thing today too the fact that you know how everyone now has their own respective like covid bubbles the yeah. people they see routinely yeah. and i'm like well Pooch is in my bubble, but I have actually haven't been anywhere near him for almost a year now. But in a Zoom kind of a way, I'm and a, yeah, you're in my Zoom bubble. Yeah, which is a weird bubble to be in a weird world. Yeah, um, but oh, I'm so yeah. ready to not use this regularly. But that's not happening anytime soon. So let's <laughs> all right, get all well, cozy. You know, hey, hugs, hugs, yeah. from across the internet. Um, Absolutely, cool, man. Well, uh, episode forty-two. Um, what do you what do you want to talk about today? Let's do a topic brought to us by a, a comment, which was uh, someone asking about top five vocal mics. Oh, right. So um, one of the comments on our last one from episode 41, mm -hmm. uh, where we were talking about when you have um, the worst possible scenarios, what are some ways to um, help yourself? Um, one of the one of our comments in that was um, you you choose the right vocal microphone. So um, we thought it might be fun to uh, go down the path of talking about what our favorite choices are for vocal microphones and maybe why we choose them. Um, I know you're looking at me going, you go first. <laughs> no, well, <laughs> no, actually, you know what I just thought of? I'll what? start, I'll, I'll start us off, but in okay. a slightly different direction instead yeah. of, okay, here's my answer. Um, <laughs> the, 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 again, the way this came about was when your sources aren't great, what do you do? And then, right. you know, you, you mentioned, well, you didn't specifically say because the source is bad just so much as if I need to on a vocal, the first thing I'm going to change is the... Yeah, like if it, I'm struggling with a vocal, the first thing my go-to is to figure out that maybe that mm -hmm. vocal microphone is not the greatest choice for that vocalist. Right. And something that just now when you brought it up that I thought about, and in fact, I actually answered, I have a gig next week. You got a gig. I got a gig of sorts. Yeah. And it's a, not of sorts. It's not a of sorts. It's a it's big a gig. gig. It's yeah. a gig. So um, it's just a little different. And we'll whatever, maybe talk about that. Talk after about it fact. afterwards. How about that? Right. Yeah. So but anyway, uh, in talking with that camp, there was some discussion about microphone. And I made a point to that camp, not in a kiss ass kind of way, in a very true way, in that this certain this performer is so good that I really, I don't, it's not that I don't care what we put on them. It's the, it's the reverse of what last week's or episode 41 is about. When the source is good, I, give me a Radio Shack mic with a switch. And I guarantee you, as long as it doesn't distort, it'll 100%. be fine. You know what yeah, I mean? I mean, that is really, um, you, you touched on a great point because the, the point that I made about deciding that maybe you have the wrong microphone for somebody is often for singers that are not great. <laughs> it, right. It, that's when you're just kind of going, how do I make this how situation do I fix this? better at all? Yeah. Conversely, There's, when you've got a badass, yeah. you're just like, you know, I never knew that I liked the EV, blah, 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 you know, whatever they're singing into suddenly is a good mic. You know, yeah, it, you know, that's a, a really great point. Uh, a couple of times that I've worked for amazing, amazing vocalists, you know, I, I had the opportunity to work for Whitney Houston. She's by far uh, the, the most amazing vocalist that I've ever worked for. Um, but one of those things, same thing, like she could have sung into a Radio Shack microphone and it have been fine. Mm -hmm. um, but then you get like little nuancey about it. You're like, well, you know, maybe that microphone has that little, you know, high endy thing that I need. You know, so you're that, still kind that of little going, high endy thing is yeah. just, I thought about my favorite vocalist of all time. Yeah. Or one of the, my favorite two. And she was so good that it, it, it in time I started nitpicking the microphone. Yeah, of course you did. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. But but you're absolutely right. It is about the source, just like everything else. An amazing sounding drum kit. You could put, you know, mm -hmm. PZM microphones around it and it would sound fantastic, it, you know. And it'll be great. Um, yeah. So right. um, so what I kind of think what we're talking about is two things, two, two mm -hmm. great great that you pointed that out two things nuances of what microphones are but also choosing the right microphone for obvious vocalists that are either doing horrible mechanical wrong things mm -hmm. um or um you're like you're just struggling to figure out any way to try to you know make this vocalist sound good you know unfortunately um some of us are sprung vocalists, you know, sometimes with background vocalists or whatever, um, especially like in the church community, you're forced upon a singer um, mm -hmm. that may or may not be that great and may have all kinds of, um, you know, habits uh, that are just, oh man, like, how do I deal with that? So mm -hmm. um, maybe we can talk about that as well. Yeah. An important nuance to bring about now as well is, <clears throat> choosing there is the right microphone there's the microphone that you like tonally in right. the best of scenarios meaning kind of like you know it's you may have noticed i've started to move this closer it's very <laughs> ideal it's it's yeah. where you want it this is cool yeah. you know bad mic technique has always been a thing vocal has been a problem vocal projection has always been a problem a problem of the last 25 years that has now gone from being a problem and an anomaly to the norm is mic technique yes and so like i have mics that i would love to use but but nowadays more times than not the first thing i'm thinking is is how is that person holding the microphone um and totally. and i mentioned i mentioned this in another podcast i did with some some people not too long ago my daughter who i often reference is six years old when she grabs a microphone, including her toy microphones, including the little one I have for her that has like built in uh, delay that she knows how to <laughs> yeah, mix. Sweet. Yeah. She, because this is what she has seen on TV. It, when the first time I saw her do it, I was like, oh, we're so fucked. She holds a microphone like that. Yeah. And that's now how people default to holding a microphone. So yeah, right. that, that comes into play big time in this discussion as well. It's so funny that you mentioned that because uh, it, I have anxiety watching a TV show with another vocalist that I have no part of. Uh -huh. Like I am not, I've never worked for them. I don't know who they are, whatever, but mm -hmm. someone major, if I'm watching like a CMAs or whatever, mm -hmm. I have anxiety about several things like holding the bottom of the microphone. So the transmitter is not working like it's yep. supposed to. I'm like, you are about to cause dropouts. Right. Like yeah. stop it. Move, Move that hand. hand up just a uh -huh. little bit, you know? Um, it's so weird that I have anxiety about it. You know, I watch vocalists and, you know, I watch them cup, I watch them do the pull away thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and it's just like, ah, so, you know, we've talked about this before a little bit, but I, I urge you guys, especially younger engineers that are working with brand new artists. Yeah. You need to start having conversations with that artist before they're huge. Mm -hmm. about, and, and relish that opportunity too, yes. to where you can talk to them and help shape them, not just for their sake, but for your like, oh my God, what an opportunity. Yeah. You know, because I, I feel like sometimes we're getting the bad girlfriend, right? Like right. the girlfriend that, that was abused yes. is, now, is now passed on to us. You yeah, know? and they're not changing. By they're the time they make it to the, us, it's not even a discussion, I know. you know? Yeah. So, um, you know, I urge you guys, you know, early on, if you see a vocalist having and, and certainly in the church community have the, the gumption to um, have a conversation with a vocalist that is doing wrong things with a microphone, you know. Yep. Um, so uh, anyway, having said all that, so let's start with um, what is your favorite tonally Mm -hmm. good microphone if you don't even know who the vocalist is let's say you're showing up at a gig god and the truth of the matter is and i've been quoted saying this a lot honestly i don't really know anymore but having to answer having to, to answer i have to answer and i really don't know anymore it would <laughs> as far as what would i start with it might i'm guessing I, i've written down a few microphones I'm either going to go super generic. Shit, I need to give you an answer. 
I'm just going to start with one. I, I literally don't have an answer anymore. Okay. I do like the Telefunken M81. Okay, that's funny because that's mine as well. Okay. That's okay. like if I haven't ever heard of Vocalist or whatever, that's kind mm -hmm. of my go-to mm -hmm. is the M81. Mm -hmm. um, but I would say like right up there with it is your common Beta 58. Like it's those but, two. Yes. You and now that's I mean? interesting that you like the – we'll go to the Beta next because okay. – when we were prepping for this, I was like, ah, I got one that you're going to say, I can't believe you like that thing. I liked, uh, we'll get to the beta. We'll get there <laughs> because it's come back into favor for me. Okay. Um, years, years later. And I'll tell you what, let me, I like the pattern of the beta. That's really the only reason. Yeah. I, I uh, yeah, there's something to it now that I, it's what used to bug me about it. Now I kind of like, yeah, um, I mean, the, you know, the so the beta is the super cardioid, right? Versus a regular 58, which is just a cardioid. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to be careful with the beta that it's not somebody that sings off access. You'll lose them. You'll lose them. So, so yep. that is an important thing to know about a beta 58 is that beta versus a regular 58. Mm -hmm. I get, I get where you're going. I get that a regular 58 is great. And the reason is, is the polar pattern, the, the, the mm -hmm. cardioid polar pattern is wider. So, you know, a vocalist doing any of this kind of stuff or sharing a microphone with somebody, mm -hmm. it is far superior to the beta. Um, what, yep. is there anything else about it that you like? Well, which one? Uh, the the regular because you were headed down the road of like i like ba regular 58 over the band, well right? well the thing is with the fit nowadays and now where we are the 58 is basically an uncolored microphone it doesn't That's interesting it is yeah you know what i mean it's yeah. it's now it is very much it's not that it's like a boring choice it's just a very safe it is a boring choice. No, but, but I totally understand what you're saying. It yeah. is like everybody else's microphone has some sort of hype to it. Right. There's no, it doesn't have the hype. If anything, and I'm not going to tell you it sounds warm. It just sounds very, um, I don't know. It's just now it's like almost a classic sound and it's, un, yeah, it's unhyped. Yep. Its pattern is just tight enough, but not too yep. tight. But it's also yep. not super wide. It's not a Neumann 105 no, no, it's not huge. or something, yeah. Yeah. you know. So it's just a very safe, run-of-the-mill choice. One thing too that I love about a 58 is a lot. Of, some of the mics that we're going to mention here um, are from. They're, they're not boutique company in the sense that like only a hundred capsules are made a year. But when you get away from Shure. Sennheiser, AT, we've talked about this on here. You do run into QC problems. You just, I don't 100%. care what anyone says. Um, once you get away from the larger manufacturers, I challenge you to always, if you can, if budget allows, get like several of that capsule or of that mic and check them all. You'll find discrepancies, even small batches of three or four, you know? Very true, very true. And and the other part about it, this equation is always like in our world, in live world, you can't have failures. So right. it is something that is concerning, you know, and an mm -hmm. SM58, you could unplug and use it to hammer in the, the drum mm -hmm. riser and then plug it back in and use it. I mean, it's really that bulletproof. Yep. Um, and you can so, get it anywhere. You, yeah, can, you can send a runner can... out to go grab one in any yeah you know remotely civilized area and they're probably Although gonna be, be careful the new there's a new there's a bunch of chinese uh fake versions of 58 uh out there i've actually run into a couple like doing one-off gigs you know oh no way in the wild i've in seen those wild. i remember there yeah. was that one that they all look like betas yeah and um i think they they actually there was some litigation or something it was like they it's, maybe i'm making that up but i know one of there's a, there's a bunch out there. I'm just saying, you know, know, know what a 58 looks like and know what it feels like. And you will mm -hmm. tell right away a counterfeit. You'll be like, literally like the, I was doing a one off and the guy handed me from his mic trunk or whatever, handed me the 58 and I grabbed it and went. You just knew. This is not. Yeah, right. the weight. Something. Wrong. Yeah. Um, so uh, just have an eye out for that. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, you know what, a hundred percent. I totally agree with you, dude. 58, you know, um, and, and, and not only a 58, but the, the big, what do you think? The big three, you know, Audio Technica, Sennheiser. Sure. Mm, sure. Mm -hmm. 
I know that's those are the ones that come to mind as far as maybe there's one more in there. Yeah, um, there's probably something like someone could say we'd be like, oh yeah, but like as far as like major manufacturers, those are the three bigs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Yeah. All right. Are we missing one? We're gonna get. We're gonna get. They'll hay let bale. us know if we're not too good. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get hay bale. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you know, so the reason sure is who they are is that they make reliable microphones. They've been around for years and years. Mm -hmm. Their capsules all sound the same for the most part. Um, you, you, a fifty-eight listening to another like if you got like what you were talking about, where if you got five new fifty-eight capsules, they are almost identical if yes. not identical mm -hmm. whereas you know we have both experienced some other manufacturers where you get five of them and even one of the other big three um you know you 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 get a, a five capsules and they have something to them um yeah it seems a great point we more should bring so that up. Go, go, go ahead well i just i'm i'm saying that i don't know about you and and this is actually a question that i want to ask you is mm -hmm. How often um, do you change a capsule out because you feel like the capsule is dying on a, a main vocal mic? How often do you do that? Yep. On tour? I, it's funny. I only change when I, when my gut tells me something's up. Okay. I have, I have read about, and it's a good, and I, and I don't, um, I think this is, I, I, it's just not ever a practice I've been into, but I've heard about people who either change, they have a schedule or because of, you know, the it's Marilyn Manson and something's crazy going on at all times where they have to change all the time. I've just never been in that situation. So for me, it's not until um, I have a night where I go something different and then it happens again. And right. then I do it. So that's just, but that's just been my experience and my career's experience that I don't do it until it's, I just have a feeling it's time. No, and, and that's what I do too, really honestly. But I do, I find that about a month and a half mm -hmm. of even a vocal that hasn't been abused, like not mm -hmm. dropped, not, you know, any of that kind of thing. I feel like, capsules start to lose a rip to them mm -hmm. um depending on the vocals so like for instance you know iron maiden who i work for the guy that you know the pipes that come out of that dude mm -hmm. are just ripping apart an sm58 you know what i mean he is acoustically loud bruce dickinson mm -hmm. is like he's a, a loud singer so after about a month or to a month and a half i start to feel like the capsule has lost um you know it's sparkly bits and it's you know it feels tired like a mm -hmm. speaker when a speaker gets tired mm -hmm. um and so about usually about a month to a month and a half in the middle of the tour i'll have uh the monitor engineer uh, tater come out on stage with the backup mm -hmm. and we compare just to listen to see if there's any sort of of uh differences in the capsule and if there is we will just swap heads you know what i mean so like yeah. steal the head off the backup and totally put it on the main and and go with that one for another month and a half and then by the end of the tour um you know if we have whatever you know a, a six month tour we we will have four or five capsules that are fully functional capsules but they they have a little bit to them that are just, is yeah. just not like a brand new one. Yeah, and they're um, probably and labeled as such in the work that's box. Right. Yeah, that's right. And we got a bunch of them that are hanging out. Sometimes we'll send them back to Sure. You mm -hmm. know, I don't know what they do with them if they actually remanufacture them or you know whatever they do. But we'll send them back to them and say, you know, listen, these are five that we think aren't at, aren't in spec anymore. Yep. Um, so it's some the reason that I bring that up is something to think about, especially like in the church community, because I know you guys buy microphones and then you use that vocal microphone on until it gets lost <laughs> for four, yeah. 40 years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and right. I guarantee you um, that you should be doing some capsule changes. And it stands to reason too, because it's not what's the famous bass players at James Jamerson? Yeah. Jamerson, where, yeah. you know, he was like, he never changed his strings famously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the sound. We're not talking about that. We're doing yeah. live sound. Definitely. You know what I'm saying? Like, it stands to reason that the thing's going to get tired, and at which case it does change it out. Yeah. You know, it's just like a, like a drum. And it, we're also not talking about some uh, 
you know, some snare drum that the head's never been changed. No, we're doing just like, it's just like what, you know, you change heads at yeah. a certain point. So it is, it's but, a good practice to get into. Yeah. But having said that, I'm the same way as you. It's a gut feeling. Like I'm like, mm, mm -hmm. and I'll go two shows where I'm like, uh, I think it's yep. the capsule. Like, yep. you know what I mean? And so, and then, you know, usually he'll bring up the backup and I'll be like, oh yeah, it's the capsule. Let's you know, another thing that. too that, um, has happened to me before where <clears throat> okay so we both use digicos and it's not only on digicos now where it, there's an alternate input but it, it doesn't yeah. have to be an alternate input it could be a whole other channel but if you get in the practice of in your line check where it's like all right check the main 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 and then okay spare 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 and then like you sit there for a couple of days and you're going is it am i tripping or is the <laughs> spare have more high end yes. and then you finally bring it up yeah, yeah, and then yeah. you next thing you know the spare becomes the main and yeah yeah you know uh, uh, off you go i'll tell you one thing that's prohibitive though with with changing them out like i'm looking at my list of mics which i promise you guys will get to uh and like there's two that are kind of neck and neck of my favorite or part of my like boutique favorites one is 99 dollars for a wireless capsule one is a thousand dollars wow i've had equal part headaches with both of them but one's so much easier to change out because even on a big tour with all the budget in the world guys don't think that we don't still have to be like hey is it cool if we get like you know we spend another five thousand dollars yeah i mean right yeah. so like we still have to you know you don't want to be spending a grand every month that's right. um but so that's what just, are those two microphones that's interesting i'll, I'll tell you yeah since well, i don't have any endorsements it's all good um <laughs> one is one is the v7 which yes. is a $99 microphone. Yes. Which um I want to love. Yeah. And I'm just not I just it's because I've never had it on just a badass vocalist too. Yeah. With, you know what I mean? Um but I know I do like it. But I recently had issues with it which to their credit they immediately Address. wanted to know the yeah. serial numbers. I mean they were they couldn't have been any more all over it than they yeah. were. You know, but it was in a batch of four. That's where I came up with that little story earlier. It was I was thinking, of, and it was just it was right before freaking COVID started. We we put a new one on. We went a few days, and Monitor World is like, something's not right. And giving them the credit, you know, it's usually me going, something's not right, being overly picky. Um, I was like, I don't know. I mean, I think it's kind of okay. We checked them all, and literally none of them sounded the same. Two wow, were interesting. Two were related, yeah. you know. But then the other two were like derivative works altogether. But so then the other one is the DPA, the de facto, yeah, which is a thousand dollars for a capsule. And I've had some really crazy uh, experiences with that mic, failure wise. I've also had a lot of success with it. But we, uh, I remember one time with my buddy Ramon Morales, who I work with all the time. It was he was on, you know, he does front house and monitors. He was doing monitors and. Uh, we had him walk, like you said, with Tater. We had him on stage, walk the mics. We swapped three capsules. They all sounded, they all sounded different. And then when I asked him to cup it, they all, and like, don't move. Like, hey, Ramon, will you stay in that exact same spot? Like, make all variables the same. Each cup produced a markedly different feedback. Wow. It wasn't like it fed back at one and then it fed back at 1.25. I wouldn't, I would right. chalk that up to life it was like markedly different so and that's I a guess, weird thing to happen because that particular microphone is designed to have no proximity effect so cupping shouldn't affect that microphone very much it but does it and, and it really it is i don't want to say resistant more resistant coming back to the 58 the problem where the 58 gets tossed out is it is the sound of a cupped 58 is like the ultimate example of what cupping a mic does to a mic, yes. you know, um, and some, and that's what, when you talk to these manufacturers, all of them, that's their biggest challenge now, you know, for, for a while there, you know, the Heil was very, was, was very, Oh yeah, you can cup it. You can absolutely cup it, you know? And then, um, all of these mics, they all know that cupping is something they have to try to work around, but it just becomes a point of physics at a certain point. It's like, that's where the ports are. When you cup it, the pattern's going to change. That's right. So it's, there's only so much you can do, 
you yeah, know yeah. but so to, so you know though to answer there was those two there and so the thing is it's way easier for me to be like throw all four of those v7s out we're starting over we're out 400 bucks versus yes. shit these things are a thousand dollars these dpas i have three thousand dollars of i don't know what to do with yeah. you know so i mean that's my complaint with dpa all along is that all of their products are like holy crap expensive i mm -hmm. mean even that 4099 is really expensive microphone mm -hmm. um but they sound amazing i mean so but, you right. can't you can't fault them for charging for something that sounds amazing i i you know i'm not yeah it's a premium saying, product no doubt it's a Let, premium product yes yeah. um but i totally get what you're saying would you know, as you were talking, so that the V7, he's talking about the SE Electronics V7. Yeah, thanks. Um, to me, I would describe it a as a 58 on steroids. Like, yep. um, I really like that microphone. Like, yeah, um, and it does have. It's like I get, I get, get that what you're saying. It's a 58 with a little more. Yes, you know. Uh, it has something about it that's like, you know, really cool on the right vocalist. Like, if if a 58 sounds good on a vocalist try the v7 because it may or may not be good for whatever vocalist that you have but in my experience if i was going to choose a 58 for somebody i'll oftentimes put a v7 in front of them just to see what it sounds like and mm -hmm. sometimes i've had great success with that microphone um but mm -hmm. i i haven't used it enough to know about the the capsule experience that you had um, well that was the yeah. I know that they, I'm sure that, you know, like you said, as soon as you said something, they've addressed it. So I would imagine that at this point, it's, it's probably not a thing, but maybe it is still, I don't know. Well, and, to, and what's, what's funny is that was the second, no, this would have been the third year, the third tour we had used that capsule uh, with this one artist. And before that, I gotta be honest with you. I hadn't, I, th I think I did in the beginning do the, Hey, 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 Hey. Hey, hey, you know, swap it out thing. Yeah. But that was just in the beginning and they all matched and I didn't do it again for a couple of years. So yep. this was the only time we just hit a bat. We just hit a funky batch. A funky, funky batch. Yeah. Yeah. Which happens. So, I mean, you know, come on, the, the manufacturers, you know, rely on their their assembly lines to be perfect. Mm -hmm. um, right. Which is not right. The case. Yeah. So that wasn't that 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 was the first time that it ever happened to me with the the, the V7 or at least that we caught you know um so i agree with you you know uh, another one in my top five is the dpa de facto and it is a great microphone to choose on a vocalist that does crazy pull away stuff and sideways shit and you know all kinds of things it, mm -hmm. it, it often is the microphone that will fix a a vocalist that has some really bad habits um, mm -hmm. and so, and has been my kind of microphone that like, if I'm watching someone do something really stupid to a microphone, I kind of go, well, <laughs> let's try the DPA and see what happens. Um, yep. but on the other, on the flip side of that, I, I don't like a microphone in general that doesn't have proximity effect. Um, I feel like a, most vocalists use proximity effect to their advantage Mm -hmm. as far as they know that it sounds better as they sing softer to get the microphone closer to them and it makes the eq of that microphone have fuller effect because of the proximity effect mm -hmm. um, and and so a vocalist that has good habits takes that into account and utilizes proximity effect to their advantage um, and so when you take that away from them and you give them the dpa microphone with no proximity effect um, I feel like it, it cripples some singers. So, uh, you know, be, be careful of that, of making that choice on a singer that maybe is used to utilizing proximity effect. Does that make sense? It does. In fact, when you said it, it just made me think of like, what a great point that is too, because if they're not getting the win that comes of the there's they that might be their only incentive to ever do that That's which right. the win for us is not only the proximity effect it's the it's Game the, before well, feedback yeah. yeah it's it's right so then yeah at a certain point they might just be like well fuck it i'll just sing oh, out here I'm, I'm gonna be barry manilow and sing yeah out here, you know 
Yeah. Um, God, I, you know, whoever makes Perry Manilow, I don't know if you've ever seen any pictures of him. Oh, it's like, it's not in this camera shot. No, for me. it's literally <laughs> it's, like his, like you can't see it, but like he holds the microphone at his belly button. Yeah. Things. Um, <sighs> brutal. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I got a story. I got, okay. I got one with the, with the DPA. So we, <clears throat> we ended up with it on Bruno because we were kind of going through some, you know, microphone trials and tribulations with him and I'm having the sound company send us stuff and we're doing everything. And we had an opener. It was Dua Lipa. And she, I knew that I just looked and I knew that she was on a DPA. Yeah. So I said to uh, Ramon, I was like, Hey man, let's, will you talk to her? Let's just, I'm sure they've got spares. Can we use one of theirs? Yeah. Um, we used it all the planets aligned, you know, it was suddenly, it was like, I was thinking it was just going to be, Hey, let's just keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. And just, it wasn't just that it was so overwhelmingly better. It was just like, it worked. Monitors had a good night. The artist was happy. I was happy enough. And we were just like, okay, fine. That's our mic. Yeah. You know? Um, and so we stuck with it for a while and I kind of on him, I uh, on and off do I, my feelings change about it, but we had this experience where he would go, it wasn't through him singing that I realized there was problems. There was a gag in the show where they would go off to the side of the stage, not off the stage, but just to the side. And they would all sit down on this rise or him and all the band. And um, was it closer to, you know, front fills and side hangs and the main hang than he is in the middle of the stage? Yes, of course he is. However, you know, I'm such a stickler for tuning. We did nothing was changing. We were tuning the PA the exact same. Everything the shit was in the same place every day. The riggers were great. All of a sudden, he started going off to the side of the stage. And while he'd be talking, I, there was this like low mid feedback, wow. which you know, of all the things, like if you take a mic and push it, the low mid's not the first place. <laughs> That's it's like come the back. last thing that takes off. Exactly. Point. Exactly. So the first time it happened, I even remember what city we were in. We we're in the States. We we're in Pittsburgh. And I was like, what? And I'm like, okay, chalk it up to live sound. Chalk sure. it up to a weird night. Yeah, something happened weird. Yeah. Something happened. And then it happened, I want to say two more nights in a row. And I'm like, something's weird. And so upon further investigation, um, what I, what we determined was happening was, is that right? Did I say that grammatically? Whatever. Yes. What we figured out, what we figured out was he's a cupper. Yeah. He's a cupper and he's a, as I've yeah. mentioned many times, it goes everywhere. He would cup it, the windscreen internally. This was my deduction. Yeah, and yeah. then the company kind of came back because I found out that, you know how it is. If you're a real stickler for listening, a critical listening, you can almost be like a, the boy that cried wolf because you're listening so hard. You're, you're right. claiming things and others are going maybe. And you're maybe, like, no, yeah. I, but I know it. Oh, no, I know. Yeah. It turned out, I found out from two other users, legit users. They were like, yes, we had to stop using the microphone. And they described it as becoming microphonic. Interesting. It wasn't becoming, and I understand why they were saying it. What was happening was he was cupping it the sweat would go through the grill, Whoa. would cover up this, the, in, the internal windscreen, and in turn was essentially further blocking the ports, even when he, is that making sense? Uh, it totally is, yeah. So, so it there's was, sweat in there already blocking some stuff, but then when he grabs it, now you're double blocking. It's the, double blocking. So even yeah. when he's not, though, now the pattern has changed that, because totally. this lower part that's supposed to be rejecting sound is now solid. Yeah. So anyway, so what would happen was the mic would essentially become waterlogged Ugh. and it would change the pattern. So no matter where he held it, it was now the pattern instead of being this. Yeah, yeah. It was almost like an, it became like an omni. Wow. So that became like a yeah, it became like a big thing. And that's, again, where we got to the time where, you know, we had we changed three different mics and they all were different. And anyway, that's what we chalked it up to. DPA also said they felt that's what was happening. Um, and it was just a live and learn kind of thing you know oh, that's interesting yeah. you know yeah. my experience with the dpa uh is um <laughs> this is an interesting story so uh with justin beaver um we i had been using another manufacturer's microphone um after you left uh mm -hmm. for a while and they started adjusting 
placement of him in some songs and we're putting him further downstage in front of PA stuff, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, uh, the, the show designer was having him walk somewhere where he didn't walk before and it was changing stuff and I was getting a little frustrated. There was times where it was like, you know, he was barely talking and standing, mm -hmm. you know, right in front of a speaker stack. Um, and so I was like, I, I was looking to try something new um, but dude, this is ballsy. I did it on a New York show. Oh God. <laughs> uh, at, at the, that Brooklyn, uh, arena, whatever that arena is. Barclays. Uh, yeah. Barclays two, two mm -hmm. nights in a row. I don't, you know, I look back at this and I go, what was I thinking? Uh, like, yeah. Why would I do that on that show? You know, that's the beauty of confidence and also being in a role. You're, totally. on a role. You're like, screw it. Just do it. I got it. It's I fun. know. Yes. Right. Like, and that's exactly mm -hmm. what it was at the time. I'm like, whatever, let's do it. You know, yeah. like, come on. The exact you know? opposite of where we are now. Yeah. When and I'm like, sure, yeah. you know, I'm sure the modern engineer, Alex was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> do you, really? And I'm like, yeah, let's do right. it. You know? Yeah. Um, so anyway, um, I, I threw it in on, on a show, you know, like we didn't even have a sound check. Like he doesn't, you know, it's like mm -hmm. handed it to him and away he went. Mm -hmm. um, and it was, uh, it was good, but it, I had kind of the same experience that you did. Like when he's just talking was the problem with that microphone. Mm -hmm. um, and when he was in, definitely in front of way in front of the PA and barely speaking and holding the microphone at his chest, uh, because of that microphone is designed to not have any sort of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, um, you know, the pattern of that microphone is not really, uh, it's wider than most and doesn't have that proximity effect. Um, it just didn't work. Uh, but mm -hmm. I tried it for two nights in New York. Um, so if there's any like pictures of that show, you know, you know how like New York is like, that's like a major yeah, show, you know? Absolutely. Um, he's, he's holding a different microphone. Um, we ended up going back to the one that we'd been using and, and use it the entire time. And, um, yeah and to transition that microphone was the m81 i was uh, trying to think what was that microphone right yeah and so yeah. that is um the you know we've talked about the de facto we've talked about the 58 and the beta and we've talked about the v7 now, i want to go um, back to the beta too though yeah at some no, point. We'll, we'll come yeah. back to the beta yeah. but um the um uh the m81 telefunken m81 um is generally my boutique go-to Mm -hmm. Like, and I think you said that earlier on too. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I showed up uh, to take over from you, when you were doing Justin Bieber, you had already made that choice. M81 was there. And literally there was no, th there wasn't any thought process for me that was like, no, this is the wrong microphone for him. It, it mm -hmm. was, I'm like, I know the M81, it's a great microphone, let's use it. Mm -hmm. Um, and that is for pop vocal that, let me uh, redefine my, <laughs> yes, my yes. favorites I get um, it. for a pop vocal and for, um, your, uh, type of singer that has nuancey singing, uh, the M81 is, is the choice. But if I have a screamer or a, a rock vocal, like the guy I have now, Bruce Dickinson, mm -hmm. uh, the M81 would not be the right choice for no. that, um, in my opinion. Uh, and so that's why Bruce is on a, on a 58, um, uh, so anyway, uh, that's my experience with the M81 is it's I would list it as my top boutique microphone. Often it is my first choice. Uh, I've put, I would say 75% of the artists that I've worked with, I have transitioned them to the M81 when I show up. Um, you know, the thing that you have to be careful is it's not only about how a microphone sounds, it's how a microphone looks and feels yep. to the audience. Huge, hugely important. Oftentimes, even more so. Even more so. Like, mm -hmm. you could show up and try to convince them that, hey, you know what, an M81 is going to sound way better on your vocal than whatever, you know, they've been using. Um, but it might not be heavy enough, you know? It doesn't, yep. maybe it doesn't have the heft um or or whatever it is it might look weird to them you know whatever you have to keep your your um your vocalist uh happy with the look and the feel of it as well mm -hmm. yeah. i remember the first time i used a uh <clears throat> going back to the v7 the first time i used a v7 with someone we at first when we got them um, it had the you know they it defaults to the red Yes. Internal. And I'm like, that, uh, -uh. that's not going to work. 
before, so before I even gave it to the artist, we waited a few more days because I had to wait for the black windscreens. Interesting. For your exact point, because yeah. I'm like, I don't want anything working against me. I know he's going to be like, man, this looks dumb, you know? Yeah, so, right. <laughs> <give it back. laughs> but, uh, you know, on the flip side of that, someone might think that the red is cool. So, right. I, you know, you never know. Um, right. What you yeah. <laughs> what you're dealing with. I have definitely been in situations where I know I have made the right microphone choice for that artist and that mm -hmm. artist decides not to use it for whatever reason. They don't like yeah, it. Yeah. And that's the thing, man. Like uh <clears throat> There are so like, and that will, that might be the most common thread of this whole show is all the variables yeah. that go into it. And it's no different in the studio, but it's like, it has, when you introduce a vocal mic, unless it's someone like, uh, you know, Justin, who maybe is not super particular, but yeah. most time, like that is like, that is a ballsy move bringing yeah. in a new vocal mic more so than anything else. And, and so many things are going to come into play, you know, that they're, they're going to base their opinion on that microphone. And it's also going to be the first thing they pick at. Of course. You know, if, well, if don't, don't think for a second that there wasn't, you know, like three backups of the microphone that he was used to using. Oh, of course. You know what of I mean? Course. It was like, it's oh, not yeah. like I just threw that out there and it was like, we were just going to sink or swim with it. it right. Was like, let's hand it to him. Let's see yep. what happens. Right, right. I, I got this no matter what, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the what's show funny about it is I don't think he even noticed that we changed the microphone on. And that's what I meant. He wouldn't. But yeah. the many, 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 many other artists would be very, very keenly aware that of something course. was different. Walk out and just be like, what is this thing, you know? Or yeah. And let's say they walk out there and they just had a shitty phone call. Yeah. Guess what's going down in flames immediately? Your new perfect choice. You know Your what I mean? new perfect yeah. sounding. This is going to be the best sounding microphone for this person. Yeah. And maybe you for making that decision because they just had a shitty phone call. Yeah. You know, you got to be ballsy about it. Um, but but you know, keep in mind that the the discussion, if someone gets pissed at you for making a swap, the discussion is like, listen, dude, I have your best interest in mind. Yep. I'm making this decision purely on sound. That's mm -hmm. it. I'm sorry that you don't like, you know, what it looks like or whatever it is that you don't like about the microphone, but I'm telling you, I've made this decision because I think it's going to sound better on your, your, you know, on your vocal yep. and they can then decide, well, yeah, I don't care, you know, or they can say, mm -hmm. well, all right, maybe I'll try it and see what happens. Yep. Or they see you knowing they've got you. Yeah. And they see you not falter and stand by your confident yeah. decision and say, you know what? I respect your decision to not go forward with this. I made it you know, what you just said, you know, and then your loss suddenly becomes your win, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah totally. So, totally. Um, but, uh, you know, again, um, I knew that Justin Bieber wouldn't even know that we've swapped the microphone on him, but it had been another artist. It would have been me having a discussion with them before they even came sure. to the gig. Like, Hey, listen, I've been struggling with this microphone and I thought that maybe we should swap it out. And any artist in the world probably would have said, well, not on a New York show. You're not right. Um, <laughs> right. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, so all of these are the political side of, of all of this stuff, but um, yeah. Yeah. Um, um Getting on, going back to the, so go, I, I totally veered us off topic, but what a good veer we just took <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> um, very proud of that left turn. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the M80 and the M81. So when, the, yeah. when, when Telefunken USA or whatever the rebirth of Telefunken was, the whole deal was we're remaking these micro we're well, the M80 was not a remake, but a lot of things were reissues, but it was like, yeah. we're bringing back this top tier microphone company but we're telling you we're outsourcing the production that's how we're going to make it affordable yes. and you know the m80 was the the first one in the the dynamic that came out that everyone fell for and part of the reason that you saw it go from you know it's a vocal mic uh ideally in their minds to start with but then it started making its way to snare drums yeah you know man. That's yeah, which I know snare drum microphone. I know you love it. And I, and I do too. Yeah. And, and part of the reason that it works so well on a snare drum is it gives you a head start in the high end Yep. because it had that boost it's built. Got bump. Yeah. It's got the bump and that's the clarity. And that's the, I don't know why I like it better. And it's like, well, I do because it's bright, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, but what was happening conversely in vocal world is it was too sibilant, too bright too even though it was a tight pattern, it was too prone to, 
wispily take off up yep. there. So if you look at, you know this, but if you guys, if you go on their website, you look at the pattern or the, excuse me, the frequency response of an M80, it's got its little tailored boost. They made the M81 that still has all the little peaks and valleys in the boost. It's just X number of dB lower. Correct. Um, yeah. And I loved when they did that because I was like, cool, thank you. It, it is the M80 can be too bright for me at times on, on, a vocal. on vocals. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So then, the, and then next thing you know, yeah, then that's so to me. And I'll tell you, it's funny. We are revealing all of these. Uh, as we are want to do sort of problems we've had yeah. but guys all of these first of all these are great problems to have because we're yeah. blessed with great gigs yeah. um we're blessed to work with all these products and these are top tier products this is simply sure. like saying my ferrari broke down <laughs> you know what i mean like <laughs> shit happens and we're doing right. live audio yeah. aside from what the singer puts this microphone through there's some savage loading out at a million miles an hour, even as delicate as they're trying to be and with all their little stations with the towels and the shit that gets dropped, it gets bumped, it gets jogged around all in a truck. Time. Yep. Right. So we're not ripping on these products. We're just saying this is what happens. <clears throat> um, something I found with the M81, the wireless version. Yep. And, and I'll say this too. I seem to find more problems in capsules than I do in wired models. And I don't, I don't know exactly why that is, but, um, um, but anyway, something I found with the M81 that I never knew again, when we were in the, uh, Bruno microphone Olympics, in fact, I think this was a, another round of the Olympics we did with him where we were going through microphones. I want to say like some of the promo we did in 2016 and 2017 was actually on an M81, but what we found was if you have to gain that mic up, so the opposite of what you said, if it's Bruce Dickinson, don't even try it. Just yeah, don't right. go near it. That mic's not. Totally true. It's not the right microphone. No. And I so believe you in that statement. Well, with Bruno, for a number of reasons, we had to really gain it up high. And it becomes like a baby rattle. <laughs> And you cannot get away from so it. So all the handling noise, right? Yeah. All the handling noise, first yeah. of all, of the capsule itself shake. Like you can sit there and do this. Yeah. And it's just like, and you talk to them and um, they will, they, they even said to me, yeah, we know. They it, it's it. now, and now again, and this is like a very few people. When I tell you this mic's gained hot, I don't mean it's kind of hot. It's stupid hot. No, this is it's like so, three o'clock on a <laughs> Yes, <laughs> yeah. right, exactly. And they oh, know yeah. that, it, and there was something about the shock mount design. And it was like, as it related to how it fits on a sure stick, that there was something they hadn't been able to get around. So Got they it. knew. But then we also found that not only just it shaking, like he would, if he would have rings on or something and it'd be like, right. Kong, kink, 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 kink. Kong. Yep. right. And he's the only person where I've ever had to, I couldn't, he, he actually really dug that microphone a ton. He it was, in fact, that's the most positive response I've ever seen out of him with a microphone, but I couldn't do it. You can't, it's not usable. Yeah. Because of the usable. And the next time that it came into my orbit was when I started working with Alicia keys and you know, she can belt it out gains at a normal spot. I never heard a bit of it. And most people that I yeah. mentioned that to that handling noise, they're like, what, you know? Well, that, I think that's, that would probably be true of any microphone that you have to gain that hot to get to work the handling noise becomes an issue it, uh, it's you know. the the yeah the the finer points because you know yeah. all the other mics we, with him we equally had to gain as hot they just didn't have that yeah. same pro so that was like that's the knock on the yeah now at the same time m80 the telephone when i swapped those out they almost always for a boutique company their qc seems to be pretty good on consistency i haven't noticed any sort of you know differences in in stuff that came new um, yeah so yeah i like that company a lot i like the people I do too. That work there um you know that's part of this too is as you gain a relationship if you're working even if you're working in a smaller market like the church market or whatever start a relationship with some of these manufacturers and get to know people because those people will uh, are the people that will listen to you when you say hey man this thing is 
I don't know what's happening here. You know, can mm-hmm. you help me to figure out an issue? Um, and man, I've had, you know, tons of friends from different manufacturers for years. Um, you know, um, Gary Boss from Audio Technica and we had, you know, Roxanne. Um, we've known her, I've known her for 30 years. And so, yeah. um, you know, and we've had a relationship and, and the best kind of relationship with manufacturers are the ones that don't push shit on you. They just say, Hey, we're here. If you want to, if you need, you know, need some help, let us know. Um, and, totally. um, so anyway, um, it, it, it almost becomes a bummer when you, it's like, it's, a. Uh if there's a downside of having relationships is you really like those people. Yeah. And when their, when their product, when doesn't, their product you know, doesn't make it, you're, you're like, like oh, sorry. Yeah, I know. I know. Or even, I don't know about you, but I'm just going to be honest. When I start getting to the point where I have to change a product aside from the dynamics and the politics of the gig itself and the artist and the other engineer and everyone involved, I'm also thinking about, Oh, when such and such catches wind that I changed, they're yeah. going to want to know what, you know, and it's just like, oh, I man. usually head that off at the pass. I'll give them a call and let them know Smart. right away. Like, Hey, listen, this is what went down. You know, the politics, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Um, and they're usually pretty good about that. They understand. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, the, honestly, the, the thing is, is that in all of this and in all of the politics, I have the artist's best interests at hand, right? So mm-hmm. I am nav- navigating through the politics with trying to make the right decisions. And if I'm forced to not use my number one choice, then I have to use the second one. But both of those are, are choices. Like you said, I'm choosing a, uh, a Porsche over a, a Ferrari. Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm, I'm blessed. But um, so uh, as we're kind of running out of time here, we got like 10 more minutes. Um, what are some of the uh, other ones on the lower, lower part of your list or other ones that you go to? What are, what's one well, of the other? Well, I was saying I wanted to get back to the beta. And what I wanted to say was when, when the betas came out, which I guess was the early 90s or the mid 90s or sometime in there. Yeah. Which for me, that's when I'm like coming about. And I'm like, oh, this is the new mic. I automatically love it. I just didn't know any better, you know. <laughs> right. But I, but I did quickly know, even with a, a novice ear, that it was brighter than and tighter yes. than the 58s in the workbox. And I was like, cool, that's my mic. Then as time went on, I grew tired of the HF. I don't an HF boost is one thing. A HF narrow peak is annoying to me, you know. Right. And so. I grew tired of some of the hypeness of the beta 58 uh, and in time it just grew old. So it kind of went off my, went off my radar. It came back onto my radar as a backing what the backing vocalists were using on this one gig. And it was one that I mentioned last week where I came in, I couldn't change anything. And I was like, Holy shit, all five of those people, it's not just they were amazing vocalists. The microphone sounded good. Right. And so anyway, the beta is one that I've kind of come back around to. I've never had the balls to put it on a lead vocalist. Is Bruce a SM or a beta? It's a beta. See, there you go. Um, I haven't had the balls to make it. I've, I, but I've, it's in my mind to try it again as my, as my main mic. So yeah. um, that's certainly not a lower tier mic. It's just now for what was the whiz bang new thing. Now it's, a dated you know i totally understand you know what i'm saying i'll i'll throw at you why i like the beta and and it is because i work for legacy artists and Mm -hmm. and the deal with legacy artists and especially bands like iron maiden huge loud stages with loud wedges Mm -hmm. i need the microphone that has the most rejection in Mm -hmm. the back um and if that stage wasn't super, super loud, I probably would be using a regular 58, but the mm-hmm. beta rejects so nicely on this huge loud stage. I got using used to using them with all of these legacy artists that have huge loud wedges, loud side fill because it is, it's pattern is so super tight. I mean, it is like, it's a lightsaber of sound, you know, it's yeah. like pointed at something and it's, you know, um, yep. and uh, so that would, that, you know, to justify why I use the beta, it's not even necessarily that I think it sounds better. Although I do like the little HF bump in it. I, I do like too. It. Um, but, but that's the reasoning. That's why I choose the beta 58 is definitely on, if you've got loud wedges, mm. um, it'll, it'll survive better than a regular 58. Yeah. 
uh, you know, back in the, the, the AT, when they were doing like the, they still do, you know, the 4100s, the 6100s, 6100, speaking of a laser a lightsaber of sound, yeah, yeah, that was one of those. Lincoln I Lincoln Park, I used the 5100, um, and it was, it was a good capsule. I like that. Yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, I went through a period with one band when, you know, Audix came out and everything was just like this tight, narrow. Yeah. We used those for a while. Um, God, there's, there's some. <laughs> I don't, what are you laughing at? <laughs> I'm just laughing because it's like, you know, I don't want to slag any manufacturer, but there are manufacturers that I just don't like their microphones. All and that that's time. fine. And it, yeah. 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 No, and, oh, and, oh, I get it. Know, <laughs> we don't have to go there, but I was I'm just laughing because there's, you know, there's some that I'm not bringing up here because I'm like, mm. and there are people, listen, you know, I'm sure we're going to get comments. People are going to say, oh, I use the Heil, whatever, you know, or I use this or, I use, mm -hmm. you know. Um, and I just, you know, I'm just speaking in experience of my experience in that there are just some microphones that I'm just not a fan of, um, yeah. on, on any vocal, like I've tried, on anything I've tried, you know, right. I've, I've, like I've literally tried. Um, and so if you got, if you can make it work out there, more power to you, way to go. You know, the, um, you just mentioned, cause you know, Heil, which there's some, sure there's still a lot of people who are using Heil and it was they definitely had their moment too in yeah. the past decade. I found the, the, I actually did have success early on with their wired PR 35, like oh, okay. wildly. So And the way I did, found it was I was doing a side project with the band. I was doing front of house and monitors or something, or the monitor guy wasn't there. And I was at a rehearsal space and, Colorado or something and I was having to put everybody on wedges and I had all these mics and I had a day to fuck around and I found out it worked on wedges and then I found out these things that worked for me at front of house in time I would then run into QC problems and I never once got the wireless version of it to do anything for me right you know which was really weird because there was a period of time there for a little while where I was like this is it I found it you know, the microphone. Yeah. I found it. And then after a while, I was like, no, no, I didn't. Yeah. And then um, I liken some of those manufacturers, Heil and Audix vocal. I'm speaking only about vocal microphones. I, I yeah. like some of their other products on other stuff mm -hmm. for sure. Um, but, uh, you know, some of those manufacturers, I liken them to um, PAs that have hype. And yep. you fire them up and you go, oh, crap, that's great. And then after about five minutes, you're like, Mm. yeah and you start picking it apart and you start going oh man i don't like that about that and i don't eh. it's but the initial reaction is like whoa you know yep um and i've had that with you know pr35 and, and other microphones um but then like after time i'm going mm, it just there's something about it just doesn't work yeah um, you know but anyway not to slag manufacturers i don't like i said um it, it, I am not the guy, like if you look at my stage, uh, every instrument almost has a different manufacturer's microphone on it. I'm not mm -hmm. the guy that's like, you know, ev everything on stage has to be, you know, sure. Yeah. Telefunken or whatever. I, I believe it's the right choices for the right thing. Um, and so there are uh, multiple manufacturers in, in both Heil and Audix make great uh, alternative instrument microphones. Yeah. Um, so uh how's that for backpedaling <laughs> yeah no i hear you this whole this is this is like the pa episode like we're gonna catch it is, i know and, and i know we're gonna hear some shit but right but is, whatever um, um what about so, what about you i know you've got a kind of off the beaten path discovery microphone wise that's a great story and that you know yeah i think i've said it before i'll, I'll give you the 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 smaller version of it but um uh, the Sennheiser 865, it's an older capsule. Uh, they don't make it anymore, um, but it's, um, uh, it's, it's a really interesting capsule. So the, the short story is this, um, working for Lincoln Park, uh, we had, we're blessed with the opportunity to have long-term rehearsals. Um, and sometimes we would rehearse for like a month before we went on a tour. Um, and I would be in a room with near field monitors and they working for that band was just a pleasure because, um, the interaction with them was, was wonderful. Um, you know, Mike Shinoda, who produced most of their records, uh, would come in and we'd have long discussions about how he wanted it to sound and we'd listen. And it was just, was, you know, the that ultimate sounds fun working environment, right? Like the, mm -hmm. this is, this is what you want 
feedback from an artist and you and them respecting you enough for you to stand up to them and say, well, I think it should be this. And they respect you. You know, that's, there's nothing better than that mm -hmm. situation. Um, so that's what it was. Um, and, um, out of the blue, uh, a month before we were about to start rehearsals for a, a major long tour, hour and a, or a year and a half tour, um, Mike Shinoda calls me up and he goes, hey, uh, I think we should change our vocal microphones. And I was like, okay, <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> uh, and we had been using, you know, the Audio Technica for a long time in it. And it, it's, it sounded great on on both of them, Chester and, and Mike. Um, mm -hmm. But he was like, He's like, and not only do I want to change the microphone, I think I want to, this is how he worded it. I think I want to change the microphone, but what I want to do is have a microphone shootout. And I was like, oh, that's badass. Let's that's the that. most pro yeah. comment you'll ever get from 100%. an artist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, or, engi or engineer. For him to think of that, like, I don't think I would have thought of that. Like, if he had just come to me and said, I want to change the vocal microphone, I would have said, okay okay what do you want to change it to you know mm -hmm. instead of like i should have been like well let's have a vocal shootout you know yeah. he thought of that and That's so badass. so we did it was badass so um so we we numbered up microphones uh, we got all kinds of capsules we covered up all the manufacturer names on stuff um obviously like tater and i knew you could look at it and know you could look at it no what manufacturer it is but they didn't mm -hmm. and so we would um uh, on the daily change out capsules. Um, if we got to a capsule that immediately all of us were like, no, this is wrong. We would change it out. But, mm -hmm. but we would actually give manufactured capsules, uh, you know, a, a long period of try, you know, a couple of days, two or three days while they rehearsed for eight hours a day, you know? Um, and, and then we would, we would record them and then we would all come and listen to them in a near field kind of a way. Um, now, the only part of this, the only rule that Mike Shinoda gave us was that he didn't want Chester and him to be on different microphones. Which is also pro as shit. Those to, two microphones yeah. to be exactly the same, mm -hmm. which is like super hard because Chester is a completely different singer, was a completely different singer than Mike was. Mm -hmm. Chester cups, Chester screams into it. Uh, Mike has moments where he's singing very softly and cups. Um, so, you know, basically we're looking for the ultimate microphone, the one that can handle being cupped, sing softly, be screamed into, be, you know, dropped, be, you know, we were, we were like looking for the ultimate microphone. Um, and the, the short version of this is that we discovered right away that some of the biggest manufacturers failed uh, when it came to specific things like cupping. Uh, a lot of manufacturers failed like right away. Like it might've sounded the most ultimate greatest sounding microphone. Um, but as soon as you cupped it, it failed. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of manufacturers can't handle high SPL. Uh, you get somebody that's into the microphone and screaming his ass off. And I tell you what came out of Chester's mouth was, unbelievable decibel level um it failed and so that microphone's gone that microphone's gone oh can't use that can't use that long story short we landed on this sennheiser 865 um they don't make it anymore which is a drag if you're looking for that ultimate all-around microphone it might be hard yeah. to find but if you are struggling with someone that does all of those things um, we, we discovered after a long journey, you know, three weeks, um, that that particular capsule was the one that survived, um, all mm -hmm. of it. But what was interesting the most to me about this whole story was, um, I, I won't tell you who they are, but right off the top, they were like, nope, that's wow. I've been using that capsule for years on vocalists and never, paid attention to that little anomaly that happens with that capsule. Uh -huh. um, so it was a real, real learning experience. And, and uh, um, that might be my favorite all around story you have. Yeah. Me and, too. And, 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 I'll, and I'll tell you what, let's let this one go a few minutes later. Yeah, we, sure, some, sometimes we struggle to hit an hour. Let's <laughs> bask in the fact that we actually are doing it because I have, I, I just thought of, in fact, I'm looking for one now or several. I just thought of a really off the beaten path, Mike, that I need for something specific. But the reason I like this story of yours so much, 
and of course you told this to me years ago, is because it fl- just like those people were, were like, what, huh, about whatever microphones they had experience with. That's the story about the 865. It flies in the face of how that microphone was both marketed and known as at the time. For sure. So guys, if you don't remember, if you do remember, let's go down memory lane. <laughs> Sennheiser reintroduced that evolution series. Yes. And there was like three or four dynamics yes the e you know 845 855 whatever i think it's 835 which they kind of comically referred to as their female vocal mic (laughs) and um yeah and then there was the 865 and the 865 their artist that they would reference it was sting and it was the cardioid i mean excuse me it was the condenser condenser version so you're automatic so you're prone to think first of all sting is not Lincoln he's Park. Not Lincoln he's not Park. Iron Man, right? <laughs> he's not a cupper. If anything, yeah. you're thinking, okay, reasonable, refined audio. Yeah. So the perception is that that's what the 865 was, and I actually p- bought one myself when they came out, just on a whim to try it. Yeah. And I remember, you know, and I used it, and it was fine. And that's always the way that I thought of that mic, that it was their condensery nicer of that line and then you came along and hit me to that story and it just goes to the show the power of and that's why it's so cool that he recommended it the yeah. the ab the blind shootout yeah. yeah yeah for sure now remember the 865 was not the best sounding microphone on chester and the best sounding microphone on mike Mm -hmm. it was the one that survived all the rules right it's the one that survived all of the damage (laughs) yeah and so it it was the damage control microphone that then was like was also the one that sounded the best in all of those situations but Mm -hmm. it definitely was not the greatest sounding microphone on mike's voice or on chester's voice in general um so there you know those are things you have to take into equation as well well let me throw out this one super oddball mike and it is was is was not the hardest thing in the world, uh, vocal wise, aside from just bad technique and everything, is a drum vocal. Yeah, is a lead drum vocal it for. Is. It's just immediately your vocal sound, your drum sound, is phased out, <laughs> goes out backwards. Window. Yep. Whatever you have, whatever your snare sound is, forget it because now it's the sound of off-axis cat <laughs> coming through that yes. mic. You know, it just it ruins everything yes, we, we often talk about your our vocalist that gets too near the drums what about when they are the drummer you know so there was a period of time where um this is when i was working with widespread panic and the drummer literally sang i don't know three songs ever four like he didn't sing much at all but that was kind of like a like for you where you know lincoln park gave you so much opportunity to be creative and to experiment and they valued it that's kind of panic gave that to me too um and uh anyway i was always looking for a new vocal mic and i did speaking of the oddixes and the all of these like super tight hyper card flavor of the month things i tried them all it didn't make a bit of difference it was still just cack city coming through the coming through the side of that mic oh, so what i found and at this point in time, this is the mid 2000s. I think it was already discontinued at that point. But Crown made a microphone yes. called the CM310A. Yes. And I think you know it. And yeah. I maybe I've mentioned it on here, but I really want to tell this story because it's very similar to yours. Let me start off by saying it's not going to win any Sonic shootouts at all. And before I kind of give the story on it, let me just tell what's different about it is they called its pattern a differoid pattern. And instead of traditional, and if I'm butchering this, actually someone don't tell me because I've been running with this story for 15 (laughs) years now. Instead of traditional, (laughs) instead of traditional microphone ported technology, like we're talking about, that's where the cancellation occurs. That's why cupping, one of the many reasons it fucks it up, fucks the whole thing up. Um, is it used the same principle if you watch old Zeppelin videos or, or I don't know, Zeppelin, but definitely like Sabbath, definitely Grateful Dead, where you see the, you see two microphones, double microphone, yeah, taped together. One of them, the, the, the way that they made it work was one of those mics is flipped out of phase. 
and that's where and they're, they're brought up together at equal levels um and so therefore any sound that is truly common to both which is going to be an off axis sound is going to cancel when you get on it you are inherently going to favor one you know yeah. and that's in that one wins that's how it works does it make a perfectly phase coherent sound it really doesn't it, it doesn't like but it's it, how it, they got around all but it's how things. they got around it and i can tell you that that crown mic again they called it a differoid pattern not yeah. cardioid they called it differoid. differoid it was the difference between the two is where they got it yeah. there i have never found anything that worked so well on a drum vocal yeah in my life and so when i was there with that band for a while that I would have to get new ones. And I was constantly looking at like what full compass had in their old stock or eBay at the time. And I can tell you now there's the threat of a drum vocal in my imminent future. And I've been scouring the internet reverb and oh, eBay man, and everything. I, I can't, yeah. I can't. And I used to own them and I've lost them. Oh. Like they, they got somewhere between tours and gigs and I didn't have a drum vocal. I haven't had a drum vocal in years. That would, of, other than just like the occasional swivel around and say something. So that's another mic that was it the best sounding? No. Did it beat the others by a million miles? A million miles. Did yeah. it work? And when it was used on like traditional lead vocalist was actually during the grunge days, like all right. of the Seattle bands used it because it was the mic you could use for loud stuff. But in the end, it just sounded so weird. They the people didn't really stick with it. So that's awesome. That's anyway, I'm glad I'm glad I thought of that too because no, that's, that's uh, great. I think yeah. that um, one little thing before we kind of get off here, um, I think we should talk about headset microphones. God, I know because the 311 I think is based on that is the yes, same thing. It is, yeah. And and I will tell you, having used it on many different artists, it is the only mm -hmm. headset microphone that's worth a shit. Yeah, I mean, like for that reason. I've tried, yeah, for that reason. I've mm -hmm. tried every other, let me tell you, I've tried every other headset microphone for singers. You know, yep. when we talk about a pastor or whatever, that's a, that's a different thing. Yep. Um, you know, the DPA one, I think, uh, is the one that I've had most success for speech. But mm -hmm. for singing, um, that crown is the only one. I've used it with Ted Nugent. Um, we used it with Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. Um who else have we used to with? Uh, there's been a couple of other artists that have had headset. And literally, that is the only microphone that works, in my opinion. Have you used anything else that's that's worked for headsets? Or is that it? one? And I'll tell you what it is. And I'll tell you what the problem with the Crown CM311 yeah. is, has been, and is going to be, and why it will die eventually is it it is looks ridiculous, particularly right. in this day and age. That's right. You know, it it's looks a huge like this thing. capsule right in front of their. Yeah. yeah. It's, <laughs> yeah. It, it's synonymous with the cheesy, horrible look. Yeah. Yeah. Garth Brooks, Janet Jackson, yeah. no young artist. If I know like with, with Justin, he too tired of the big. We swapped it out in the middle of the tour. He wouldn't use it anymore. They because won't right. of how the, it looked because of the look the only other one i and i have very i, I had an, a guitar player one time who would these big uh soldano heads with uh mesa boogie stacks right behind him and he's saying super quiet and he actually asked me what about a headset mic and i was like don't ever ask me that again You'll look at this. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know? and um so i've only i have limited experience with them but i can tell you with lady gaga who i have mucho experience with I inherited this, but it was, they use the Shure Beta 54, which I'm not sure if it's even made anymore. I don't think so. I don't think so either. And uh, that was another gig that Ramon and I did together. And he used to have to, before we even get to the sound of it, it was just so all over the place. It was <laughs> so... Yeah, it was taped up like you had to rig yeah. it so heavily. You had to do that with the CM uh, three eleven too. Same right, thing, all, all of them do it. Yeah. But this one was super janky, and it's one of those where I'll tell you I had success with it, but really what I had success with is she's a phenomenal vocalist. Exactly. Who like sings you, like you started with on this whole episode about talking how you could put a Radio Shack microphone in front of yep. her. Who sings great. loud. Yeah. And therefore, truth be told, she sounded like an aerobics instructor because there is a capsule right here at all times. She's dancing her ass off. Yes. She's not singing to try. Like, you know, it's like 
So that's the only one I've had, whatever. I think it's the DPA one is like super in vogue now, but I don't like it because it comes no, to like here. Exactly. It like I, that's why they like it because you don't see it, but that's not where I need it. <laughs> no, I know. You and, know, and especially when you're talking about us in, you know, super large mm -hmm. volume situations, um, you know, I mean, for theater and for that kind of stuff, it works fine. Um, but when you're talking about having an artist that's, you know, right in front of a stack of speakers. Yeah. You know, doesn't yeah. Work. I'm trying to think, is, is there anything else like, you know, we, I mean, that's another story. I think I've told you with the Justin Bieber thing. Like I know you, yeah. he called up one day and just said, I don't want to use that microphone anymore. Let's use other ones. And we said, sure, no problem. Come down to sound check and we'll try some new ones. No, didn't no. come to sound check. <laughs> no. So, so literally we, me and Alex built, um, 12 presets mm -hmm. that whatever microphone he would choose on the table we would then recall Boom. during a show. So literally he walked up, the, sh the intro's rolling. He walked up to a table. Clear, co clear calm goes off. <laughs> and walked up to a table, 12 microphones pointed at one. Uh -huh. Alex put it on him, ran to the intercom and said, it's the 510. Uh -huh. Call up the preset. Yeah. Then he would go and have a, a wardrobe change and choose so another one. And Alex would call me up on, you know, it's the 462. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, and we played that game for three shows. And it was just like, uh, and finally, um, guess what? He chose the one that sounded the worst because of how it looked. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. Doesn't Sen Sen I know Sennheiser made one. I mean, they all make They've, They all them. make them. They all make they them. Just, but I the problem is this, and, it, and it, it is just a factor of reality that if for singing, if you can't get the capsule in front of yeah, their forget vocal, it. it's it's not good. So, it's not. Yeah. Um, yeah. Those things suck. I'm sorry. If you have a headset mic on your gig, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, too. <laughs> you know, well, I, you know, and I say that, but I mentioned with with Gaga, where I have a phenomenal vocalist and the thing is pegged right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The I'm sorry is all the breathing and the yeah. over proximity. And then I mentioned what a problem I have when people do this. So I'm kind of saying both things, but sonically it sucks. Yeah. Having a headset is not the best case scenario. Um, you know, it works. Um, but those are, those are the tools that you need. Um, cool. Well, I think we've come to the end of this discussion. Is there I think any so other too. boutique -y weird ones that you want to talk about? Not that's coming to mind. I'm, yeah, gra I'm glad either. the 310 made it in there. Um, yeah, for sure. But no, not that's coming to mind. Something will the second we stop. But um, I, th I think that's a good place. To, yeah, to stop. No, I think it's a good place to stop. Um, yeah. And uh, so, th you know, to sum up, this is uh, an important thing that you guys should all, if you ever get an opportunity, is to try... You know, if you're in a situation where the vocalist is allowing you to try different microphones, like get to know those microphones. At the very least, try them on your own voice mm -hmm. so that you have them in your toolkit and know like, oh, this vocalist, I think this microphone would work. The only way that you're going to know that is if you've spent time with that microphone. So, um, you know, get get some of those microphones if you can and and um, and learn what they sound like. Know your shit. Know your shit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway, thanks for tuning in, guys. We really appreciate it. Uh, more fun things to come. We are, uh, you know, Chris and I, 2021, we're ramping up. We're going to bring you some new and exciting things. Uh, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you on the next one. See you, everybody.